What is up? How's everybody doing? Thanks for coming back and watching another Let's Play. Today, we got something special for you. We're starting our Let's Play of Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. So, Dragon's Dogma is an RPG that was announced in 2000, I think 10 or 11, and came out in 2012. Uh, it's a Capcom release, and I don't know who um, developed it. Let me check on that real quick, and then we'll edit this out. I didn't do really any research on this. You know, it was just Capcom developed and published. That's why I couldn't think of anybody else, because it was just them. <clears throat> hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back. Today, we've got something special. We're starting our Let's Play of Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen. So, full disclosure, I have played this once, and I have beaten the main story once. Uh, I started the game as a fighter, and I ended up as a Mystic Knight. <clears throat> Probably gonna take a different approach this time, try one of the other character um, classes out. Uh, I really don't remember too much of it. It was quite a while ago that I played it and beat it. Uh, I did have a great time. It was an awesome, awesome RPG. One of the best I've ever played because of its uniqueness and a couple of aspects that we'll talk about, specifically three things that I'll go through <clears throat> later in this episode. So, Dragon's Dogma was announced in 2010, 2011, released 2012, and was well, well received, I would say. Um, I never played it till a couple years ago. I was playing probably Morrowind at the time or something like that. Um, or Oblivion, I can't remember which one. But either way, I was into another RPG. I wasn't playing this. I don't even remember this one. I just heard about it from the internet and everything else. Some friends of mine that played it said it was a great game. So I decided to play it. So anyways, Capcom developed and released this game. And this is the Dark Arisen version, which has what's called the Bitter Black Isle DLC content, as well as armor and weapons that you can start the game out with, which comes with one of the greatest um, ways to break this game right off the bat. I'm gonna show you how to do that, if you do so want to do that. Um, the secret that I'll show you will give you basically a giant amount of money that you can use to buy pretty much anything for the first half of the game. It'll pretty much be all the money you need for about half of the game. <clears throat> and you can do that in the first five minutes of Dark Arisen. But you have to have Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. So back to the game. It's an RPG based in some world where dragons and monsters are real and you're a character traveling about solving the mysteries of the land and discovering new places and fighting monsters. A little bit of monster hunters in it, a little bit of um, Witcher 3, a little bit of, I would say, even Dark Souls almost, um, with the way things can actually escalate very quickly and all of a sudden you're gonna die. Dark is really important in this game. Um, as far as nighttime is concerned, things become much more dangerous and much more difficult to deal with in the night. Um, yeah, so that's just a little overview of it. Let's get into this and see what it's all about, guys. So we're playing this on a PlayStation 5, <clears throat> even though it says PS4 and all that stuff, because I actually bought the PS4 version and then uploaded it to my PS5, because uh, I got a PlayStation 5 later. So... You know what's one cool thing about this game? This main menu, I've never really seen this before. They actually have a menu that shows the manual. And I wish more games would do something like this, because it harkens back to the old days where you'd get a manual inside the case, and that was really nostalgic. You go through it, it would have some lore, some characters in it, some of the subtle game mechanics that you can discover inside of it and stuff. And let's go through this really quick. See, we've got the controls here. And I imagine, I never bought the game hard copy. I imagine this is the one that came in the case. Game screen. See how, how much this explains, how in depth this is, look at that. Main character, the player character, main pawn, your own pawn cannot be removed from your party. Support pawn, a pawn that belongs to your party, can be swapped out. See, just those first three things are just bang, bang, bang. A lot of key information in there. 
I wish I had read this before I played it. Yeah, look at this. Riftstone, door locations, obtaining information, main pawn. See, this tells you all the stuff about this in depth in a really cool and nostalgic way. That's great. Okay, let's get to the gameplay. So I did try hard mode the first time I ever played this game. And it was way too hard. It was just like a giant grind. All the enemies had way too much health and it only took a couple of hits to really kill me. And so it took so long to progress through places that I just said, ah, this isn't very fun, so I gotta change this. Um, so we're just gonna go with the normal difficulty. We can't do easy mode, that's for, ew, can't do that. We're too much of a gamer for that. In another place, in another life, another child of man blazes your path. <clears throat> How dark it's gotten. That's Using a lantern will hold the darkness at bay. Click that to open inventory. Okay. That being the middle button on the PlayStation 5 controller. So, <clears throat> the survival mechanics in this game are pretty in depth, pretty detailed. Your lantern, you have to actually equip it, and it does run out of oil. So, it's bright right now, but it will dim. And then once it dims, you have to actually go into your menu, which is one of the pet peeves of mine in this game. There's actually a lot of menu time in here, uh, and I don't really enjoy that as much as I enjoy doing stuff. You have to go in here, you have to go there, you have to add oil from here. And if you don't have oil, you can create it from other stuff. So it's very detailed, but as is with most detailed, it can be tedious at times. But nothing's perfect, so you get it either way. Either you have a mundane game that has none of that kind of stuff, or you get one that has it and it's a little bit tedious. I'd rather take that and have it be a little bit tedious. To have the ability to choose. Oh, look at that. That's sick. It shows itself. Whoops. Yeah. This way. Find the edge, Master. Yeah. Invoking this stone can gain you new allies, known as pawns, who's loyal in battle. Oh, I didn't read the rest of it as fast. Tis a rift stone, a stone etched with strange markings, may be used to summon pawns from beyond. So, this is one of the first mechanics in this game that makes it extremely unique, and I've never even seen it duplicated since this game, and I don't know why, because it's an amazing mechanic. Straight up. Hold on. As you progress in your adventures, pawns will provide you with useful information and hints. Okay, so, we've acquired these pawns. They came out of what's called this rift stone. They come from the rift, which is where they all live. Basically, they're robots that look like people. They have no souls, and so they have no real personality. They're just warriors, mages, and archers, different classes and different varieties, and you can download them, basically, from a server slash rift where they hang out. The reason I call it a server slash rift is because it's connected to all the other players that have pawns that are playing this game that have internet. Like Morgana, <clears throat> where'd she go? She could be a pawn for another guy in another PlayStation 5 or Xbox or a PC playing. And as she progresses through the game with him, she gains information about caves, dungeons, characters, monsters, treasure. And as we go through the game, say that she's a little ahead and we're a little behind, she'll tell us about the information she picks up from being with her other character. And the same with Arpon. Arpon will relay, relay information to other people on that server. So when it goes back to the Rift, it basically uploads all the information from your gameplay as far as dungeons, quests, and all that kind of stuff and then allows other people to see what you've done, like where a secret treasure in a cave is. And we can also order them a little bit. Help, and they'll buff us and do all this kind of stuff right here. Like now my sword has, looks like fire damage, right? You can also say go and they'll attack, come back and they'll come back with you and follow. So 
We'll go into pawns later and what else they can do too, because there's a lot more to them than just that. But they are the first unique aspect of this game. And like I said, I've never seen it duplicated since. I've never seen it before, and it's amazing. I think it would be, yeah, I don't understand why more people and more gamers and developers haven't done this. So, the combat is the second thing. As you can see, we've got light strikes, we've got heavy strikes with triangle, square. We can pick stuff up with circle. Now we can hold him while I plunge my sword right into him like that. Isn't that cool? I mean, that's one of the coolest things. You don't see that much either. <clears throat> and these guys will fight totally independently of you. They'll go off and start casting spells or picking their own targets and whatnot. You don't have to control them, but you can semi-direct them. Um, you can also give them weapons. Well, we can't do it in this menu, but later on we can equip them with all sorts of stuff, give them items to heal themselves, buffs and everything like that. It's really detailed. So between the pawn system and the combat, the combat which is extremely fun and rewarding, detailed and challenging, those are two of the three aspects that make this game amazing in my my retrospective view. A goblin arisen. I am at your side. I sense another. Gotta save this guy. Now I do love me some hack and slash and hey buddy, what's up? You've come! I fear our defeat is plain to see. We thought to inundate the worm with sheer numbers, a sea of blades. It was a fool's help. Our sea runs dry, and the Duke's army is lost in the gambit. Arisen, I beg you, sir, grant vengeance to those who've fallen. We shall. Of use, I will give it gladly. We have triumphed. So that's just a cure-all cure item. Any kind of ailment you get, debilitation, it'll cure it. Man, that guy got wasted. <laughs> Plenty of breakables and treasure chests along the way in this game. So, like I said, we've got light attack, square on PlayStation 5, triangle, heavy attack. You can hold it for a heavier attack. And then if you hold the L1, it brings up block and a bunch of shield fighting mechanics. I wish these guys would quit crowding me here so I can show you. And then triangle brings up another heavier shield attack. Sprint with L3. Jump is really responsive, really, really More good. Bodies. And it's probably the best jumping RPG game I've ever played. Also, you got your, well, there's no roll. That's the one thing. I don't think there's any Dark Souls roll here. So see that I can do other things. Like if I press circle, it'll bring them to challenge me. So if I press R1, it'll bring up other fighting mechanics like burst strike, upward strike, and circle is some kind of step back and strike or something like that. And if you're a mage, it'll do different things, too. Hold on. Oh, we're out of stamina. Okay, so... Snow Harpy! Whoa. I'll draw its attention! Beware the Harpy's show! So this is where, like I said, that hold R1, and we'll use our upward strike, and then we'll use our first strike attack on him, and really stagger lock him, and all of a sudden it's over. So the way you can quickly combo stuff like that, like, okay, upward strike, then we burst strike, boom, then we're on top of them, and we just slice them up. Like that little three move combo, finish them in a couple of seconds, and it's so rewarding and fun. It feels really fluid. I want to be more of a mage or archer. I haven't decided on this playthrough because I was a warrior in Mystic Knight last time. Um, so we'll just see. Oh yeah, check it out. You can also pick up stuff and throw it, just like this. Oh, oh, explosive barrels. But he's got a real weak toss. I don't understand why he even did it, because it really doesn't uh, do much at all. You can even jump attack. Oh, get me in the face. Boom, step back and finish him. <laughs> She up there? Yeah, she is. What's over here? Oh, see, here's a treasure chest. Good thing we came over here. Parsepud juice. I'm gonna throw this on her. Oh, 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 
I blew her up with that. So for some reason, didn't do any damage to me. Leave it to me. She didn't like that. Lure them down and strike. What do you mean? There more? Oh god, they're right there. Fall, beast! I like his action shot. Don't let them fight! Oh. Come on. Oh, I was gonna grab that barrel. Donkey calling him. Let's join them. along your health gauge will indicate any such changes. So if you get like poison, Arisen, petrified, way, it will show up right next to your health and stamina bar there. The worm awaits beyond Leave it to me. And there's a Should whole lot of status right? ailments you can get. We hidden away here for fear of the beast. Ever oh, there's a chest. Treasure like I said, there's a lot of stuff Arisen, along the way. This way, sir! We'll for the worm to work any further atrocities. Our army is routed. Yeah. It is plain truth. I think we're gonna be in trouble here too. Beyond that grand door. The dragon makes its roost. Well, let's get him. Oh, God. Man, what do they call those? Well, oh, he's dead. So, check it out. Back to the fighting in this game and how awesome it is in it. Yeah, they're casting spells and shooting poison out of a snake tail. I can climb on top of it. Look at that. Oh, I get blasted off by the goat head. Oh, now I'm asleep. That's not good. That's a bad one, actually. Because now I'm just totally... Okay, he came up and got me awake. So you can actually jump up and climb on him and start cutting stuff off and doing more damage. Look at how much more damage I'm doing. So you gotta watch your stamina. Oh, we cut the tail off. So my stamina is really low. Do I have anything for stamina? A little bit of that. Oh no! I grabbed my own guy. I was trying to grab him. He's all pissed. He's got his tail off. Oh. There's two of us riding. Three of us riding. So this is where it's a little like monster hunters. There's different ways to attack them. They all have different weaknesses and everything like that. Whoop. See how fun that combat was? Now choose, flee, or step forward. Take hold of what lies beyond. Claim mastery over the eternal ring. I don't 
know, man. So the pawn system in the combat. Two of the very unique, interesting aspects of this game that make it outstanding. Like I said, outstanding. Les placeurs de l'essieu et toujours ne va d'une occupation en I don't even know if I got any of that right. The delightful and ever novel pleasure of a useful, useless occupation. I wonder if he means playing video games. Excellent sound, excellent score. So he just burnt that of the sky over the ocean, huh? It's kind of like he was summoned. Cool, another good thing about this game, it has an awesome character creation system. One of the coolest ones I've seen. So we're gonna be a, well, I almost wanna be a girl this time. I think we should. Uh, we'll play as, we use, Pretty tame, we'll just call her Danielle. Your moniker will display for players with parental controls enabled. <clears throat> oh, so if you got a racing name, it's gonna show up as this, huh? So what's that for D? Damien, Dan, Darian, Darsh, Dart, Dave, David, Dawn, Dimitri. Not very many girl names in D. <clears throat> Donna. Dora. Dorothy. Drek. Yeah, there's not very many Ds. How about... Falcon. Mm, okay, so we got kind of like a... <clears throat> oh, well, I want to see... It doesn't show me I can't spin that character on the right. Huh. I wish it would show me them with their stuff on, but for some reason it doesn't. I wonder if that's a problem with the game. Anyways. And let's go. She's taller. I think that's cool. Height 178, weight 61. She's a short little mage. Taller paladin. Giant. Giant. She's got a good height, 168. She's the same as the other girl. That <laughs> looks kinda like, kinda like a dude. <laughs> oh, I love that armor. That armor is sick. Archer, she's cool as hell too, and she's tall. The elf. I don't know, I was a warrior fighter last time. So it's either the elf, the elf archer, the African archer, or whatever they're from. I don't know where they're from in this game. Um, She's cool too. I like her. Kind of has a little bit of a Egyptian Middle Eastern look to her. Sorceress thing right there. But this armor, this armor is sick. I want to know what the hell armor that is. 
some kind of dragon armor. Okay, let's go with... Which one's taller, the elf or her? 181, 115, 178.9. Wait. Okay, well I guess we're going with that voice. Blonde hair. I don't know about that. I liked her hair before. There it is. Yeah, I like that way. Can we do it a little differently, or is that the only way to do it? Oh, the top knot's cool too. It's a little too tame. That was pretty sick right there. So it's either that one, or that one. Yeah, I actually like the one where it's at, up out of the way better. Looks more samurai. <laughs> that one, look at that face, damn. That's gnarly. Poor girl. Whoa, ha, ha, ha. I don't know, they all look weird, to be honest. Whatever. Of course, we gotta have some crazy eyes. She only got one eye. That's sick. Oh, she could have no eyes and be blinded? What? That's sick. Dude, we're totally gonna have one eye. That is freaking cool. Anyways, um, can't pick the color. Oh, we can. Oh, we only got one eye, so. Well, I guess uh, it's the other eye, isn't it? Oh, red, that's cool, but no. One sharp blue eye. I like it. Can I make it, like, really big? There we go. Like an anime size? No, that's weird. Okay, get a little too in-depth now for this. Oh well, yeah, we want to be as tall as we can be. For sure, we're Amazon. Ah, ah, ah. We'll go slim, I suppose. <clears throat> I like her skin color the way it is. I mean, I, like, I really like that preset, to be honest. I thought <clears throat> it was just the right size for a bust size. No way. Ah! You can totally do that. That's so funny, guys. Look at him. Well, I mean, hell yeah. Knock them all around, left and right. Torso. I mean, whatever. I don't really care. It's None of this stuff really matters. Stance. Imposing but ladylike, huh? Sure. Makes it kind of neutral, I guess. I don't know. We gotta put a scar right over our eye. Now it's gotta be over the closed eye. There we go. Yeah, look at that. That is sick. Hmm. 
<laughs> That's cool, you can put actual makeup on her. That's weird like that. Good. Let's take our war or archer lady and go see what's up. Yeah, so I mean, you see how in depth that oh, character creator system was, especially for 2012. She looks terrible in that outfit. We need to get her some better gear. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye! The prophets have spoken, friends. The dragon's return is nigh. Join the honorable duke's ranks and help us be rid of the fell beast. The days come to lay down rod and reel and take up the sword. Look at how tall she is compared to the other girl. <laughs> I made her like six foot eight. Wow. Uh -oh. That dragon would torch that place so fast. Wouldn't stand a chance, really. Oh, God. Now, 
it's like we're dead. Vigori, nestesta, nesti, mi esporate et malaga. But we live. Dragon's Dogma. We got our heart ripped out and eaten by a dragon. Us poor fisherwoman from a village that decided to pick up a sword and defend it from a dragon that came from who knew where. Help me! She's still alive! But we yet live. Oh, it's all scarred. And that shirt's barely covering any of that. <laughs> So big. Uh, uh. Oh, he can talk to us now. much of an arms. Rusty sword, rusted staff. Chief Aderos, it is time for you to begin your journey as Arisen, but before you can win your heart back from the dragon, you'll need to prepare. So, here we are, the Dark Arisen. We've had our heart ripped out of our chest, the dragon ate it, Tigo biddies are falling out everywhere, and we gotta pick a weapon. So, let's see what this is about. Your vocation determines your basic attributes, wieldable equipment, and skills. So, <coughs> I'm thinking Strider would be cool, man. So I was a fiver last time, that was really fun. <coughs> I really like the high DPS stuff. Mage or Strider? The daggers look cool. Honestly, Mage has some sick abilities. But she looks way better as a Strider. Let's do it. We're going to be the Archer Dagger Strider. Okay. You can equip yourself with a primary and secondary weapon. Primary weapons such as swords, daggers, are combat essentials. Secondary weapons like bows and staffs offer support. So my daggers are my primary, my bow is my secondary. Okay, make sure we pick up some of this Mithridite because that heals poison. You say it left a glowing scar? Yes, the wound has closed and it seems the worst has passed, but her heart lies silent. If you would face me, you are sure of this? Yes. Ill magic, the work of some curse. The whole world's already gone mad for fear of this dragon. Won't no good come of this. I must go see to the others, Kina. Tell me if all changes here. All right. <clears throat> I just want to know where the dragon came from and why. What's he doing here? I don't remember any of this. Okay, so we got a couple of gold. Defeating foes and completing quests earns you experience, and each level gained raises all of your attributes. Press options to bring up the pause menu, where you can check your attributes, a full map quest information, and more. Okay, so that's the middle button. That brings us up to our inventory, which has all of our usable stuff. 
So like I was talking about the survival mechanics in this game, stuff like this scrag of beast, which is some beast meat, will rot after a couple of days and you have to throw it away. So make sure you use stuff like that that are consumables uh, very quickly. We've got our lantern right here, of course and our weapons and it's kind of weird like i don't know why they have this menu for these weapons here because you can't do anything except give and discard them in this menu this shows you all your armor and stuff like that you actually have to go to the start and then go equipment if you want to do any kind of switching gear yeah anyways and you can do a little bit of an in-depth view of it a shirt of common style and inexpensive fabric offers protection against the cold but little else you can see vocation uh who can all wear this the resistances and defenses of all that stuff so then you can also check your pawns in this menu too. So your quest menu is over here. This will tell you if we don't have any quests right now. Completed a couple of those. Newly Arisen, Harbinger of Destruction. Yep. We've got rewards for those. And here's our map. And there's the little town we're in right now. And that's where we have to go. The maps are actually pretty decent in this game, I feel like. I feel like the mini-map's excellent. The overview map could be better, but it works. There's the area, and here is all of Granis. And you can't see it's all foggy, but it is pretty huge. People bear an icon above their head possess special information. Those bearing green icons have new quests to offer. So if you see people that have a green question mark above their head, or a red question mark, you definitely need to talk to them. Oh, there's a chest right there. Green uh, is, is quests and red is information. So, the third aspect of this game that makes it extremely unique for an RPG, we've talked about the pawn system, we've talked about the fighting mechanics and how fun they are. The actual platforming in this game as far as jumping and climbing on stuff, is extremely detailed and unique. I've never played an RPG where I can sword fight like this, walk this wall like that, climb up on something like that. We can climb all the way up on, well, we can't get up there, can we? Because that nest we can harvest an egg from. And then jump over here, jump up there, run and jump down like that. I mean, it's really Assassin's Creed-like, Prince of Persia like kind of platforming and they actually like hide stuff where you have to get really good purchase equipment and useful items from shops or wandering merchants you encounter on your travels so that's because this is the inn and there's a merchant right over here but let's get back to the platforming aspect I was talking about in this game the actual running around physical mechanics of what you're doing the responsiveness of it is balanced ex just just right for me Oh, see, there's one of those green question marks we were talking about with quests. See, I can climb all the way up here. Watch this. See, this would be so hard to do in Skyrim, Oblivion, or Morrowind, any of those RPGs like that. But this just makes it smooth and easy. Oh, and there's even places where you have to do stuff like this. It <laughs> didn't render very well there, but... Now, this is an easy quest. I'd craft dressings for the wounded had I the makings. If only I'd known. Because I need a favor. Can you fetch the flowers I need from outside the village? I need more of the one you see there. And one other sort besides. The more you can find, the better. Available quests change as you progress through the game. Additionally, you can always consult the quest section of the pause menu for your current objectives. People with red icons appearing over their heads have information relevant to your priority quest. If you have several quests ongoing at the same time, you can set one as priority in the quest section of the pause menu. Doing so will make all people, places, things relevant to the priority quest appear prominently on your map. So one thing about that, like see how she has a red question mark now? She can give us information about the quest she gave us, but if we switch quest to something different and we don't have another quest to switch to or I'd show you, it would actually go away because her information wouldn't be relevant to the quest that we prioritized. The game's really cool like that. So let's get her information. The wounded need medicine, cousin. The mixture calls for two types of flowers. Speak to the others for more word on that. I ask you this favor because I trust you. Okay, so she wants to speak to other people. Here's what this flower looks like. It's pink. And so there's one more that we got to figure out. 
And so we'll just do that as we go here. One more thing before we end this episode, because I've given you the three unique mechanics of this RPG that make it great, in my opinion. Check out how you can harvest stuff. There's another part of the survival mechanic really quickly. So we harvest the fish like that. The fish will then heal our stamina, which is really important. Stamina is always going down. So we come to our inventory and we use it. Boom. And that's how we use that. It heals our stamina. And if we don't do that, within about a day or two of the game, that fish would be totally rotted and be useless. And then we'd have to just throw it away. So I think that's really cool. But what I was coming down to show you is the fact that water is actually deadly in this game. It will not kill you, but it will just transport you back to shore if you land in it. It's like some darkness takes you. And you don't lose any health your items or anything like that. It'll always just transport you right next to shore. Um, and then you're soaking wet. So that's the first 45 minutes of Dragon's Dogma, guys. Dark Arisen. We're going to come back and continue the main story here. We're going to figure out why our heart got ripped out, where that dragon came from. It, what's he doing here, and why did he want to kill us? What was he talking about in that weird language? <laughs> Not, no idea. We're going to try to find these flowers along the way, too, and see if we can get some better gear for our character. And then in the next episode, I'll actually show you guys one way to break the first 50% of this game, where you can get enough gold to pay for probably the first half of the game, uh, as far as gear and items go. Hey, thanks for watching. My name's Lucky and the channel's Game On. We just keep on gaming on. We'll see you guys in the next episode of our Let's Play. Peace.